over the last 50 days, I took on the challenge to try and raise my very own ant colonies to see if I had what it takes to grow them into thriving ant empires and keep them safe from escaping. But what started out as a simple experiment quickly took a turn for the worst, and I started to question whether I was truly ready to keep these ferocious predators. But to understand where it all went wrong, we need to rewind time back to where it all began. It all started on a warm summer night where I was on a mission, a race against time to find a queen ant. I knew that my window was thin and if I missed it, I'd have to wait an entire year for another chance to find one. So I headed out into the dark, the conditions just right with my fingers crossed, hoping that fate would be on my side. And after only just a few minutes of searching, I struck gold. There were queens everywhere, but I had to be fast and quickly catch them before they got away. And after about 30 minutes total of searching, I returned home with a ton of queen ants and I quickly began to make a home for each of them. The chances of successfully founding a colony are slim, and I knew in the back of my mind that not many of these queens would make it. Along with a ton of black queen ants, I found three queens of an orange variety that I had never kept before, which made me super excited. And after doing a bit of research, I heard that these orange queens could all be kept together without having to separate them, which would increase their survival chances, so I decided to make an experiment. But early the next morning, I peered into the home of my orange queens, only to be met with a scene that I'll never forget. Scattered across the nest were lifeless bodies, silent remains of a brutal battle, and in that moment, I knew exactly what had happened. While I slept that night, the queens had turned on each other, fighting to the death. My hope that they could coexist had been a fatal mistake. I had failed them, and they had paid with their lives. And just like that, there was only one queen left, standing triumphantly over her dead sister's bodies. She must have easily won the fight, because after closely examining her, she looked completely unharmed. I didn't know if she was going to make it, but I knew that if she had any chance of surviving, I needed to take out the remains of her victim. This test tube was now her home, and since there were already a pile of eggs, removing the remains were my only option. But regardless, my heart felt heavy. I now knew that this lone survivor was our one and only chance to start a colony, and my expectations were low. These queens have a long journey ahead of them, and over the next 50 days, they will truly be put to the hardest test of their lives to prove that they have what it takes to survive and that they are worthy of forming empires of their very own. And in attempts to increase the chance of their survival, I decided to feed them all a small drop of honey, as after this, they will not eat anything again until their workers arrive and bring the colony food. Late last year, I also caught a single queen of a red variety, but her journey to survival is even more challenging and uncertain. Because she failed to start a colony of her own before the temperatures dropped last winter, that meant she had to survive the entire winter all on her own and wait for the warmer months to continue raising her young. At this point, it had been many months since she had eaten anything, and when I offered her a small drop of honey to help give her the strength, she happily accepted it and drank the whole drop. After 15 days, I nervously checked on the queen ants, fearing for the worst. But when I took a close look at the queens, what I saw was amazing. One of the black queens had successfully laid eggs, and there were even a few larvae present within the nest. This was truly an amazing sign for this queen, and I began to have hope that with some time and a bit of luck, this queen might just have what it takes to survive. And when I took a look into the Red Queen's nest that day, I was also happy to see that her young had continued to grow, and after closely looking, it looked like she had even laid a new batch of eggs, which was also an amazing sign. It has now been 30 days since these queens began their long journey, and by this point, most of the queens that I caught on day one hadn't survived. And with my heart racing, I again looked into the test tubes of the two queens, and I was greeted with good, but also some very alarming news. The good news was that when I looked into both of the queens' test tubes, I was ecstatic to see that both queens now had cocoons present within the nest. This is the very last stage of development before they finally hatch into fully formed worker ants, and this was truly amazing news. 
But the very concerning news was that after a month of captivity, both of the Queen's test tubes had completely run out of water and they were on their final reserves. This was very bad news because this meant that I had to move both Queens out of the only home that they ever knew. And on top of that, the timing couldn't be any worse because at this stage the Queens are at their most vulnerable. Any movement or vibrations could cause the Queen to startle and even eat their own brood wasting all of the progress that these queens had made, and resulting in everything that they had gone through being for nothing. I knew at this point that the queen's water reservoirs wouldn't last until their workers hatched, and this meant that if I didn't step in, the queen surely wouldn't make it, and so it was now up to me to save them. I quickly gathered two larger test tubes from the queens that were unfortunate enough to have not survived, and I began to clean them out. Once the new test tubes were ready, I connected them to the entrances of each of the Queen's current tubes, and I prayed that they would move in safely. And it was at this moment that I thought about the Orange Queen, who had already been through so much, and I started to worry about the possibility of her test tube having the same issue, so I decided to make an exception and check on her just once. The Orange Queen was slightly larger than the other two varieties, and since I originally planned to have three Queens start a colony together, I decided to give them a much larger test tube, which I am now very grateful for. Because when I took a look at the Orange Queen for the first time in 30 days, I was so happy to see that she had not even gone through a quarter of her reservoir. And not only was she alive after her brutal fight a month prior, but she even had more eggs and larvae than the other two queens. But because the Orange Queen was larger in size, this meant that her young would take longer to develop than the other queens, which meant we'd have to wait extra time. I looked into the queen's test tubes a few hours later, and both of them had moved into the new tubes and they brought all of their young with them. This was a major success, and to celebrate, I gave them each one last drop of honey to help push them through this final stage of their journey. It has now been 50 days, and today was finally the day that these queens had spent their entire lives waiting for. When I looked into the Black Queen's test tube, I was overjoyed to see that they had three workers hatch, and the Queen had even laid another batch of eggs. At this point, it was safe to say that this colony had made it, and they were well on their way to becoming a thriving ant empire. The Red Queen had also finally had her first worker hatch, and my heart was full when they both happily drank my honey offering side by side. This is the first meal that this new worker had ever had, and it was amazing to finally see that this queen's work had paid off. The Black Colony at this point is thriving, and on this day, I thought it was a good time to finally give them their first live prey in the form of a cut-up mealworm. The young colony had never seen anything like this before, and when I put the worm inside, they immediately went into full-on panic mode and started moving their precious young as far as possible to keep them safe. But soon after, they realized that the worm was not a threat, and they began very eagerly starting to feed. This protein that the mealworm provides will be the perfect nutrients to feed the colony's young. On day 60, the colony had now grown to four workers, and even more were on the way. So at this point, I decided to give the colony their very own place to explore and find food of their own. This small tube was the only home that this colony had ever known, and they were very cautious when they noticed that there was now an entrance in place of where the cotton used to be. To further entice the colony to explore their new home, I offered them a small drop of honey as a housewarming gift. This seemed to do the trick, because the colony instantly smelt the honey and a brave worker went out into the unknown to investigate. The worker found the honey, and very shortly after a second worker came to partake in the feast. And after only a few minutes, the entire drop of honey was completely gone, and the colony had brought it back to the nest to share with the other workers and the queen. It has truly been a wild ride over the last 60 days, and I'm overjoyed to see that these two queens successfully raised colonies of their own. But this is only the beginning of their journey, so if you liked the video, please be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. If this video reaches 100 likes, I'll make an update on these two colonies, and I'll be sure to update you all on the Orange Queen as well to see if she manages to overcome the odds and take care of an epic empire of her own. And with that said, thank you all for watching, have a good day, and stay tuned for part 2.